On the 27th of last month, the Health Academy hosted the Self-Care Fair. This fair showcased some of the many ways to help improve your mental health. With fellow students running the booths, we met with staff and students running the event. I am so incredibly proud of my students. Um, they have worked so hard to put this fair together and it's going superbly. I'm, I couldn't be more proud. Who am I here with today? Angel. Marto, sophomore. Uh, my name is Monsa and I'm a sophomore. What are you teaching? Intense exercise. How would this help with someone struggling with mental health? Um, you can go out for a run, just relax. The event had many different booths, like animal therapy, aromatherapy, music therapy, nutrition therapy, nature therapy, suicide prevention, and many more. We also met with Miss Westfall to give shout outs. Uh, I want to show appreciation to the 10th grade Health Academy students that did an amazing job planning and preparing for this event. I want to give a shout out to Miss Woodfill for doing so much organizing and coordinating for this wonderful event. UCSD for funding our booths, our admin team for being here to support us, ASB and Miss Brianna for providing the Cardi crew, and, and Mr. Mitchner from The Nest for making sure that everybody knows what an awesome event this is. Thank you so much. The event was overall very fun and informative, and if you missed it, don't worry. They plan on hosting it next year as well. From murals gracing building walls to even utility boxes dressing crosswalks, this Wednesday we're diving into the vibrant world of public art in City Heights. One exciting endeavor making waves is the Little Saigon Project, fueled by a generous grant from the California Arts Council. Now on the streets of Little Saigon District, along El Cajon Boulevard, I had the pleasure of meeting Tao Huing French, a distinguished muralist, photographer, and co-founder of Mindful Murals, based in San Diego, for an interview to learn more about the impact and fascinating stories behind the murals that grace our daily paths. My name is Tao Win French, and I'm an artist and muralist and photographer based in San Diego, California. You and your art are especially recognized and popular in San Diego for its uniqueness and message it brings. So my question is, do you ever experience moments of pressure or periods where you have arts block, maybe a need to create something more better or more influential than the last? Yeah, that's a really good question. When, whenever like because mural art is so accessible and in the public's eye it is a super vulnerable process and when I first started I didn't actually know what I was doing and I was nervous like most of the time I was painting because I was so worried about screwing up and when you screw up on a mural it's so public you know and you 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 fear that scrutiny or that criticism from a lot of people so I recently saw that you went to Vietnam to create some murals during that time did you face any pushback or criticism for your betrayal of Asian cultures in your murals and if so how have you faced it or responded to it? I actually didn't get a chance to paint nearly as much as I wanted to over there and I wanted to create something that was going to be really true to my culture. Uh, we did get pushback from the local ward departments um, to the point where they sent police to some of the places where our artists were working and I could sit here all day and tell you how subjective art is and it, it's not, not everyone is going to like your art but as long as it makes you happy and it gives you a chance to celebrate your, your story and your culture, then I think it's worth it. I think it's still worth taking that shot. Many students walk past your murals on their way to school every day. So created by a Vietnamese woman yourself, your art holds the potential to inspire countless others. How do you hope your murals will impact individuals, students, and young minority, especially those from Asian backgrounds who see themselves represented in your artwork? I, I want people to be able to see that side of it because I think like the part of the message and part of like what draw, draw drives me to do these murals is going to be the real reason why people want to get into it but you have to welcome the failures you have to welcome that level of criticism because it's only going to help you refine your message more and more and it's it's a, if you really believe in it nothing will shake you if you if you are a young artist it doesn't matter what color your skin is and you feel that passion inside of you just naturally i highly recommend that you try it out <laughs> Hey seniors, are you ready for prom season? Be sure to stop by for your prom contract in South Quad during lunch. ASB has had a booth up in the South Quad every day during lunch where you will be able to pick up your prom contracts in order to purchase prom tickets. Prom ticket sales began on the 18th. Till the April 15th, tickets will be $90. From April 16th till May 6th, tickets will be $95. And the last week, from May 7th till May 15th, tickets will be $100. Be sure to stop by for your contracts as soon as possible before it's too late.
CBS News Entertainment Student Television. You can win $30,000 with this scholarship alone. Hi there, I'm Mrs. Ledesma, and I come from Hoover High School. Now, if you're looking for a great opportunity to pay for your college tuition, the Stephen Efron Scholarship is worth to apply to. In order to be considered for this scholarship, you must be a senior at Hoover High School, you must have a 3.5 GPA or higher, and you must plan to attend a four-year university. The Stephen Efron Scholarship Award goes up to $6,000 annually for not one, not two, but for up to five years. Plus, there are no citizenship or permanent residency requirements, so be sure to mark your calendars on the deadline for April 14th. Talk to your school counselor on more details on how to apply or visit pricephilanthropies.org slash our scholarships. Hoover, along with 18 other schools, have an incredible opportunity for students to make a real difference in the world. The Aspen Challenge is empowering young students from high schools to tackle critical problems. They've been given 10 weeks to design innovative solutions in their chosen areas since February 21st. On May 1st, these 19 schools will come together to present their brilliant ideas to the panel of judges. The judges will later then select the three winning teams as the grand prize winners of the Aspen Challenge. What inspired you to get involved in the Aspen Challenge? Honestly, just to help my community because I did see that they needed more mental health resources. Uh, what inspired me to get into the Aspen Challenge was, I guess, I like doing things to help my community. I participated in multiple clubs before where we worked on like community service events. And because of that, I, when I heard about the Aspen Challenge and the things that I could do, I was really like interested in it. Can you tell me about the project you're working on and its impact? Our team, we decided to take on mental health and we've decided to create an app that provides users various types of meditation resources and solutions that will hopefully better help the mental health of students in Hoover High School. And right now we're working on researching and distributing a survey across the school. What skills and qualities have you developed through the Aspen Challenge? Um, it's just the overall process. Uh, it's really all about uh, leadership and working together so as with uh, time management and having fun. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Mr. Kateson. I'm the Restorative Justice Coordinator here at Hoover. And I'm going to show you where my office is. Come on, let's go. Bill, what? Why are you calling in? Are we in? All right, so we go through the admin building. We walk through here and we're going to take a right. Where yes. All right, let's look at where Mr. Kateson is at. So we're going to take a left. So here we go. Come on. And here's Mr. Kateson's room. All right. I always try to decorate it each month. And this theme is, you guessed it, St. Patrick's Day. Now that you know where Mr. Kateson's office is, visit him if you feel your situation is not being heard and would want more advocation. Well, I check in with students. I want to make sure that uh, both teachers and students are... Um, having a positive experience. So a lot of times I'll just be around campus, students check in with me. Uh, my favorite part of my job is working with students. Um, I love to empower and um, just give students a voice to be able to be their best. Okay, remember I'm in room 143 and my main goal is to make sure that Hoover is a positive, great place for us all to be. Hello, Hoover Cardinals. My name is Orion, and we're going to be asking students and teachers about how they feel about phones. Let's go. What's your name and grade? My name is Angel. I'm in ninth grade. What do you do on your phone most of the time? Text my friends or be on TikTok. And why do you do that? There's nothing else to do. What's your name and grade? That's in ninth grade. How many times, I mean, how many hours do you use your phone for? Like, most of the day. What can you do instead of using your phone? Homework. What's your name? My name is Mr. Uyoa. How many times do you ask for your students to put their phones away during class? Uh, it depends, but uh, at the beginning of the year, more. Um, but there are some students that need to be reminded every single day. Do you ever get tired of repeating what you say to the students? Uh, if I got tired of repeating myself, I wouldn't be a teacher. <laughs> what are some solutions you do? Um, well, 
the there are some consequences if kids continue to need reminders. A lot of times I'll just take it and put it on the desk. They get it back later. And sometimes kids just need a break. I, I feel like some kids are truly addicted. And even though they don't mean to be stuck on their phone, it just finds a way back into their hands. And so sometimes a little break is good. And What's your name in grade? Andrew Ninth. How many hours do you use your phone for? Like 10. What can you do instead of being on your phone? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Read the signs up. <laughs> Heavy use of phones may block deep connections with others by generating emotions of isolation from reality. People frequently have shorter attention spans and worse productivity as a result of being easily distracted by social media and notifications. Furthermore, extended use of screens has been connected to a number of health problems such as strained eyes, bad posture, and irregular sleep schedules. It is recommended to only use your phone for about two hours. Hours. Go check out the outdoors now. Are you looking for a taco restaurant to try out? Stop by 664 TJ Biria located on 540 University Avenue, San Diego. The restaurant is open from 7 a.m. to 10 p.m. every day. Though the restaurant is known for its birria, they also carry menudo and even the dessert flan. While we were there, we ordered their tacos, quesadilla, and a cup of their consume. Before our food came out, our server gave us a bowl of radish and limes, as well as a bottle of hot sauce. The tacos were seasoned perfectly, but if you want an extra kick, make sure to add some hot sauce. The consume we ordered came with beef in it, and though the cup was small, they made sure to add lots of meat. Be aware that the tortillas get soggy fast, so don't let your tacos sit out too long. Though this restaurant got crowded fast, everyone's food came out at a reasonable time and everyone was attended to, even though there were less than five employees working. Next time you're in the area and you have a sudden craving for tacos, stop by 664 TJ Biria. Did you know our very own school has a swim team? Here at the local YMCA is where Hoover Swim Team trains. Over the years, Hoover Swim Team has had a reasonable amount of swimmers, but as of lately, not too many students know about this team. The swim team utilizes the YMCA's outdoor pool and train from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. every weekday. Though it can be a little intimidating at first, the team makes sure that you feel welcomed and comfortable so you can swim to your fullest potential. Not only does swimming benefit you in many ways physically, it also benefits you academically if you are looking for something to put on your applications. I think students should join the swim team because this is the only sport that works out every muscle in your body. It keeps you in shape, being healthy, and on top of that, it gave me the opportunity to be able to be a lifeguard right after high school, which is a great job. It looks good on a job application and it looks good in college applications. It's a great way to relieve stress and stay active. Uh, people should join because it's a way to make new friends. Um, also because it's a nice workout exercise and it's a new way to um, do another sport for college. It looks good on applications and the meets are really fun. The pros and cons of having a small team, I definitely get more help like with the coaches because the team is very small. So that way we do learn a lot more. And the cons is definitely when we go to meets, we're not able to like do all the activities that are provided for us. What I like most about the swim team would probably be um, all the great people I got to meet throughout the years. I like the meets, the people, and it's also really fun, even the practices, even though the conditioning is really hard, but you get through it and it's a nice workout. If you're interested in the sport, make sure to contact Coach Patty via email at parismendy at sandy.net and come try out. Hey, can we come in? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so who are we here with? I'm Alexandra Torres and I'm a senior. I'm Marissa Delion and I'm a senior. I'm Linda Chavez and I'm a sophomore. Can you give us a tour of your field? Yeah. Okay, so this is our JV shed and this is the dugout for our visiting teams. That's it. <laughs> we do our push our push our pull-ups pull -ups. when we get in trouble the coach is like on the bars and we just start doing pull-ups here <laughs> no i'm just kidding we don't do that now, do we do this? Coach. hello say hi coach hey, you want to go do that again 
Go like this, go like this. <laughs> Did you guys get that? Nope. Oh my. <laughs> this is the card. Yeah, this is where we come and cry when we strike out. <laughs> we just come and we cry. Cry? <laughs> just kidding. We never strike out. Nope. Uh, <laughs> that's like. Okay. And this is our dugout. Oh, it's all messy. <laughs> this is our dugout. We're currently. You guys. It's a project. Yeah. You guys can come back on cleaning day. Yeah. yeah so. And this is my favorite spot. My favorite spot because I get the snacks. But it's messy. And the balls. It's basically. Messy. This is a home. Ah. <laughs> Here is position number one, and this is the pitcher's position. This is position number two, and it's a catcher. This is position number three, and it's first base. This is position number four, and it's second. This is position number five, and it's third base. This is position number six, and it's shortstop. This is seven. This is eight. Nine. Well, yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> this is our favorite. Thank you for coming.